the wonderful Wicked have released the Incredible Hulk. And uh, I thought a few of you might like some tips on how to paint the skin. So this is what I've done today. I've just taken the, uh, the main body of the Hulk and I've cut him down a little bit just so I could show you how I painted him up to this standard. It's not the full finished thing, but you can apply these techniques to the whole of it. And obviously I've painted his face so you can see how I've done that. Now, if you like all things 3D printing and painting, and if you find these videos useful, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps the channel and it helps us grow. So don't forget to subscribe and enjoy the painting of the Hulk. So this is the Wicked um, main model, which I've just cut the body down a little bit just to make it flat, just so I can show you how I paint him up. Now with any model, you know what we need to do first. We need to prime it and I'm just using some air primer from the Army Painter here to give it a blast all over. And it's really important you do prime your model black for the Hulk because we're going to be utilizing some of this black uh, as shadowing through the skin. Uh, it's also obviously really important that you prime your models to get a layer of paint on top of your resin. You can paint on top of resin, of course you can, but it's always best to have a primer first. And the Army Painter Air Paints are pretty good, but as I say, we want to build some shadows on him. Now I'm going to start with Savage Green, which is one of the colour triad from the Army Painter Mega Set. And it's the darker of the three colours in the triad set. And what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to aim above him and I'm going to hit him from above down uh, on the whole i am going to cover him from the front as well but i want the effect to look like that the green is on the top coming down and that the black low lights of the primer can stick through or show through so you'll see them so they look like shadowy now um we're going to give him a few layers and the way that the color triad from the army painter work is there are three colors all complementing each other a low color a medium color and then a high color and they will um, be applied in different stages starting off with the low color which is what i'm doing here and then you just change them as you go through medium and then high and it adds the volumetric effect it adds lighting it just adds shade to them now here's the second color green skin quite an apt name there for old Hulky and if you can see what I'm doing with this I'm just literally staying at the top of the model and I'm coming down on him so the base layer of green over the base layer of primer black uh, will show the shadows but this green now will start to highlight the light hitting him and I always do this with skin I always do this with all my models regardless of what color I'm doing and it's usually a skin tone first but obviously in the Hulk it's green so kind of a skin tone I guess but exactly the same principle and once you've got that on change to the lighter color which is the feral green feral quite apt for the Hulk and all I'm doing with this I'm just literally concentrating on the main bits of his body that stick out I'm not giving him a general coat all over I'm just doing the top of his shoulders his chest the top of his head his nose his cheeks i'm literally giving little squirts and little sprays just where the light would rest upon him i don't want to change the whole color down i just want to give the eye something to look at and give the variation to the green shade that you would naturally get if you were looking at shadows doesn't take too long to put these colours on. They're really, really good. As I say, they're from the Army Painter Mega Set, and I highly recommend you get it if you haven't already got that. And there we go, and that's what he looks like now. He's dried, and I'm quite happy with the shadowing, as you can see, the black and the darker and the lighter shades. It really does add to the effect of light, and that's, that's it. It's done fairly easy. Now, just using that mid-range, the green skin, I'm mixing it with a little bit of white. I really want a pale green. Um, normally, where the whites of the eyes in a, in a person are bluey grey, in the Hulk, they're going to be green. So I've just mixed that white with the green skin, and I'm going to use that to apply the, if you like, whites of his eyes with a really narrow brush. Once that's done, and once I'm happy that that's in, and you can see that's the shade that we've gone for, I'm going to use a very similar colour, just a little bit darker, so that green and that white, just to paint his lips. I want his lips to just reflect and show out, stand out a little bit from the rest of the body. Now, you know, I could have left the lips exactly as they were on here, and they would have done, but I just wanted to highlight them a little bit. Now, that's not the last colour that I'm putting on the lips, so I know they look a little bit bright, but I am going to do a little bit to work on them as you will see. Um, so do the top lip a little bit darker than the bottom lip and just literally frame his mouth and that's all I'm doing here. So the green skin, a little bit of white just to frame his mouth around his lips. 
Um, what you can see me doing here is using the base green skin on a really thin brush and I'm brushing some vertical lines down just to give that effect of uh, lip lines. Now we'll do a bit more later but that will really add to the effect of his lips and uh, I'm just darkening some of the shades a bit to add some lighting effects. Now using a white and a red that I've mixed into a pink colour I'm going to base his tongue with a pink. Now this isn't going to be the end colour that I give his tongue and I'll show you what I do to it later but um, this pink this pink color will act as a really good base for the uh, for the little bit of extra work I'm going to do to him a little bit later on which I'll tell you about now you can leave it pink if you really want to but uh, let's uh, let's come back to that in a little while the other thing I want to do while I've got that pink in hand is if you look at normal teeth the gum line of teeth will be a little bit pink and that's what I want to add in here so using that fine brush again I'm just going to go between the lip line and the outer layer of the teeth right in the base and I'm just going to draw around them just to add some gum effects and that would be the same with a purse but certainly the same with old Brucey Banner. Now the teeth I'm going to paint white to start with and I'm just going to paint each individual tooth in a vertical motion. I'm going to do a little bit more work on the teeth um, but I don't want them to be too white. Now you can leave them white if you want to, that's really not a problem. But again I'm going to come back to the teeth and do a bit more work on them in a bit. Um, don't forget he's got teeth on the bottom and he's also got teeth running inside his mouth on, his, on this model where he's roaring. So make sure you touch them too. Now I'm going to use some angel green here where I'd normally paint the black of the iris. I'm going to use that angel green to paint the iris and again I'm going to take into the fact that he's wide eyed because he's roaring and I'm going to make sure that I can see a good proportion of the outer layer of his eyes. Obviously if his eyes were a little bit more closed we'd have to adapt that but just use a really narrow brush and paint that green as you would normally paint the black of the iris. Make sure you're getting facing in the same direction and the same coverage each side. And there we go, that's what it looks like. You can also see, and while I have the pink in hand, I just went on the bottom eyelid with that pink as well, forgot to say that. Um, I'm just using a black now to frame the top part of his eye. Where I've put the pink at the bottom, I'm going to use the black on the top. It's almost like an eyeliner, but it will just again help to frame the eye. So black on the top lid and pink on the bottom lid. That's generally the way eyes are shown. Now using the same base green and I've mixed it with some white, I'm going to now paint the inner colour of his eyes and his eyes would be a green colour, so a nice light green for his irises. Again, narrow brush, dollop it on there and keep the darker layer of the green skin and the lighter layer of the white mixed with the green skin into the centre and that will add depth to the eyes and there we go, you can see the colour of the iris. You can see the pink and also the black as well. Now. I've got the black in hand and I'm going to do his eyebrows, a really thin brush here and just follow the lines of the eyebrows. Now Wicked brilliantly have um, uh, put the eyebrows on already and you can just follow those really easily. So not too thick with your paint, nice thin strokes, different directions and build them gradually. You don't want to paint a caterpillar on his eye, above his eye, so little strokes with a thin brush using that black paint. It makes it easier when the eyebrows are actually moulded into the model. If they're not there, best thing to do is just pull up a reference picture of whatever you're painting and, uh, and try to do the best you can there. You might need to lay it on a little bit thicker at times just to build the eye, but the eyebrows, but thin lines tends to do the trick. And while I've got that black in my hand, uh, the next bit is going to be really delicate. I'm going to uh, dob in his pupils. So clean the brush first, get a really really small dot of black right on the end of the of the brush and just bosh in his pupils, first the one then the other, take your time. If you get it wrong you'll just have to start the eyes again to a point but uh, let's have a look what does it look like. We've got away with it, we've done it and it looks nice. So pink bottom, black top, two shades in his eye and we've popped in a pupil, wonderful. Now I'm using some wash from the Army Painter, I'm using some green wash and what I'm going to do here is just low light 
some of the uh, folds on his face and some of his natural creases that you can see there from the top of his nose down to his lips and he'll also have some creases between his eyes and on his forehead and I'm going to use this green wash to just add a little bit of shadow and a bit of uh, low light to it. Now we've already given him three layers of the uh, paint when we sprayed him so this helps to just add some shadows to where they should be and again you can pop some on the lips I've put some on the lips here just so that it falls into the the ridges of the lip shape and that adds to the effect as well you know put it where you think it needs to go inside the lip there on the bottom of it just underneath it between his eyes the folds of his face the uh, the crinkles of his raw now on his forehead there anywhere as I say where there's a crease in the skin put some of that green tone to low lighting now you can buy all these things from the description and I'm an Amazon affiliate and a little bit of the money that you spend will come back to the channel but it will cost you absolutely no more and it's just a way that you can support the channel um, obviously paints aren't cheap so I do need to keep buying them to make these videos and I find that if you can buy it through the, uh, the link it really helps now speed paints oh I love speed paints by the army painter and this is my secret for the tongue I just use some of the red speed paint and paint it on his tongue and you will see what it does to it it just brings the tongue to life with various shades and it makes it really ping and pop wonderful speed paints you've got to get some if you haven't already got them get them they are fantastic now what I'm going to do as well using a different kind of speed paint and this time I'm going to use the pallid bone I'm just going to go over his teeth and what this will do is it will take the white off his teeth and just yellow them up a bit now you can leave them white if you want to it's not a problem but just adding this pallid bone to his teeth really just adds another effect and like I always say you've got to try to do the best you can and if you're lucky enough to be able to get some of these speed paints they're great for little things like this absolutely brilliant and they make such a difference such a difference so um, just literally apply it on it's like a wash you haven't got to be too careful with it just blob it on there rub it on wipe it off again with the brush even it out and uh, and the speed paint is done they're so so good I suppose that's the whole nature of them their speed paint you're supposed to do it quickly make sure you get the ones at the back as well we don't want to miss them and you can see the kind of shades it's done in his teeth it just brings to the realism I think Okay, now time for his hair. Um, I'm not too worried about his hair, that's relatively easy. A black thin brush to get the low, uh, to get all the finer points. And then I'm gonna switch to a great big thick brush to, uh, to blob the rest of it on. Once it's all done and it's on there, I'm gonna dry brush the hair with a green, but the hair wasn't too bad to do at all. Relatively easy, but it just frames the face really, really nicely. And I've just used some matte black for this. Now you could highlight it with a bit of a light colour, but I've chose to use a little bit of a light green just to uh, to dry brush it. And, and there he is, that's him pretty much done. Don't worry about the mark in the neck where it's joined. I'm not too worried about that. This is just to show you how to paint it really. And using that green wash, again, I'm gonna go over all of his muscles, every single one of them is gonna get that green wash. Not only am I gonna go over all of his muscles, I'm also gonna go over all the veins that are above and below the veins and that will make the veins stick out as much as the muscles and all you need to do with this wash is apply it to your brush and trace the inner parts um, where the muscles or the rest of the uh, veins are and it's as simple as that now if you haven't already done it hit the subscribe button hit the like button share it with your friends put some comments on there the more comments I get and likes the more that this uh, video is advertised on YouTube and uh, you can support the channel that way you can also support the channel by buying any of the items from the Amazon affiliate link in the description but most important to me really is subscribe please please just take a couple of seconds to hit that subscribe button and uh, if there's anything you want me to paint, any, anything you want to know, any advice you think you need, just ask and I'll see what I can do to uh, to help you on your way. Now, now we've got that on, get some gloss varnish and I'm using Vallejo gloss varnish and I'm just going to put some in the eyes. It's really important you don't rub the eyes and it's really important you wait for them to be dry. Just put a bit on your brush and dob it in there. First the one, 
than the other. Also think about where else he's going to be glistening and wet. His lips are going to need a little bit of a coat, his teeth and his tongue. Now, uh, once you've done this, uh, the model is pretty much finished and it's, uh, we'll have a little look at what it's going to look like. But I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you found something useful and I hope you've learned something today. And that's what it that means a lot to me if you have. Um, as I say, subscribe to the channel. Look, check out some of my other videos and make a comment, hit the like button and share with your friends. Now, thank you for watching today. I hope you've enjoyed the, uh, the incredible Hulk build and I'll see you for the next video really, really soon.